Hello, everybody. Frankie Day here from Frankie Day Models. Okay, <clears throat> for this uh, beginning of the week, for this Monday, I have for video number two for my winter build of the Heller 1 100 scale HMS Victory. Okay, guys, a lot was going on here since the last video. I posted an inbox review and entry of, the, of my build. Uh, I've been on this now probably about, about four or five days. Don't quite have the hull done yet. I've got a lot, lot of work to go on it. You'll see as we as we take a view of this. One thing about this kit, guys, got to take your time on it. Yeah, it can't be built in a matter of a couple weeks here or there. This thing's a very difficult kit to build, and um, it's got to take your time. This thing's got over two thousand pieces, and it's a very beautiful model when it's finished. It's museum quality for certain although it's plastic but this is going to be 50-50 these things will be half wood and half plastic so I'm going to beef it up a little bit by putting wood doweling yards, masks, doublings and such to enhance, to enhance integrity and strength but like I say guys don't take much to bust these yards these things like I say one step that's it then you gotta reinforce the mask with wire and everything else. Oh Lord. It just uh you got to be very, very careful to avoid from breaking these things. So it's like almost like any model. I mean it, it's strong. I mean the yards are like strong, but like I say, it can't take a blow. It's that's that's it's very brittle. It don't take much point to snap, so you gotta be very careful. Okay. <clears throat> On the hull size, I primed the whole entire hull with white. Now, I'll post the last video that we had. The, the whole section was already smitten together. And I've already uh, added a bead of ACC glue inside the seams of the joining hull halves. That way, it'd be able to be an uh, extra strength there needed. And uh, so, I had a little filler on the exterior part of the hull, so I'll be able to... Uh, Hiding those scenes quite well. I got them all sanded down quite well. I give the whole entire hull a coat of primer, flat white. Uh, when the flat white is uh, has dried, I airbrush about four coats. Uh, this number eighty-four is Humbro ochre color. <clears throat> Even myself have learned as much as I know about these things, guys. I I had no idea that these things were okra, not yellow. So all of us model builders are guilty of, of innocence of building Lord Horatio's, uh, Sir Lord uh, Horatio Nelson's flagship victory in wrong colors. They were actually they were ochre color. And uh, so those of you who never started the victory before, ochre is the, is the correct color for it. And uh, it's it's almost like a tannish yellow in a way of some sort. It's uh, I don't know, like a Chartese color. It's it's, it's just uh, it's yellowish. It's you you'll see it as we see it on here. <clears throat> After the yellow is dried, I masked the I masked the, uh, the the yellow and went ahead and there and there brushed it with uh, three coats of flat black. That took about. <clears throat> about two and a half days to do all that at that period, at that stage of construction. I assembled the rudder. I got the rudder over here. This is all copper. Airbrush of copper. It won't be for long today. It'll look like this. It'll look like the war line if I get done with it. I want to show you right here as we bring the camera to the to, to the HMS Victory. So I got anchors, I got trail boards, I got galleries over here. Uh, they'll need to be uh, prepped and ready for for painting. I've already got the galleries painted flat black already. So I'm going to airbrush some uh, polyurethane on it, lacquer, and let it dry and then go back and start putting the yellow on there. <coughs> that will probably be done, probably done this evening. Incidentally, I wrapped this video, I have a live action video of this painting the uh, 
the port side of the water line. I already got the starboard side done already for you. And you'll see the finished product when it's done, opposed to the uh, to the copper that it hasn't been uh, painted yet. I guess that hurricane that we had was kind of left a nothing but a drab of 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 uh, four, uh, of uh, cloudy skies and everything else. Outside's not too bad temperature wise. It's nice out there. Right now, I think we're in the middle of the summer. I think in about another couple more days now, this hot air is going to peter off. It's going to start getting cold. But today's my day off, so I'm going to enjoy it myself on this day off of mine and work on my victory. So those of you who uh, uh, been bear with me, have patience with me during my transition from aircraft to ships. And I get that model ship bug in winter times because it's <clears throat> There's something about it, I don't know. I've been airplane so long, it's about time to start working on ships. So I'm going to give this thing my second go on the HMS Victory. Again, this kid is not for the novice. Believe you me, anybody that wants to buy their child something like this, that's called foolhardy. You don't want to do that because that child has nothing to know, doesn't, does nothing to know how to build something like this. Even when I was a child, I started building models when I was three years old, but under the tutelage of my father. I, I was never turned loose without his supervision, and, and so they, they know I'm responsible not to handle glues, paints, and even these things. They really can compose harm. Okay, enough uh, chatter. We'll bring the camera down. We'll take a look at the HMS Vicky right here and show you exactly uh, where I'm at on this thing. Alrighty, now I want to show you something, guys. Both sides of the hull is all primed white inside, primed outside, inside white. <clears throat> then I went ahead and painted where the gun ports, shutter bays at, the gun ports at, where the yellow is at, the ochre. This is the, the color ochre right here. Now here's the copper. I just there brushed some copper out last night. I let it dry. I let it dry for overnight, so it's nice and dry. This stuff was ready to ready to do instantly, so I let it dry overnight. After that dry overnight, I went ahead and started. Now this is all masked off here. After all this is done, all after all the ochre and the black is complete and the waterline is done, don't remove that tape because you're not done yet. You need this tape on here. To finish up what you're about to do now. This is what it looks like when you get finished. You can see the version of the uh, of the copper. And it gives it the patina of uh, the oxidation of. Uh, of copper by using greens and whites and turpentine. So get yourself a bowl like this with turpentine in it. And we'll do that on the tutorial of live action with Frankie Day. Okay. I got me my shop my old shop paper and I got that on. I'm gonna start wearing that. Between cigars and paint my, all my shirts are ruined almost. So it's always good, guys, to wear aprons like that. If you don't, your mama son's going to get mad at you. And she's going to say, buy your own clothes. I am tired of buying clothes for you, and you burn holes in them, and you got paint on them. So it's always good to wear this, guys. Even Frankie Day's learned the hard way, which I should have known better years ago. So always wear a nice apron and something to protect your clothes. There you go. All righty. This is the stage as far as I got. And I've got all my galleries right here. A couple ladies, Susan, they all been painted black. And I've got all my anchors right here. they all been done. Before I even paint these anchors right here, there's a dimple right there where it gets where the, 
molds shrunk down. That's got to be filled with, uh, let's see if I can find one for you. Oh, that's it. Well, Y'all got them. Yeah, right here. I know the can. Yeah, see it right there? See that little dimple, the little pucker goes in? That's got to be filled with filler. All four acres that comes with this kit got to be got to be treated that way. There's something about the way the mold does it settle down. I got my trail board. He's got to be all prime painted ochre, too. So my goal for the day is get this, the port side to look like this. I start working on my transoms and my rudder and get that going after that. I, then I got 104, 32 pounders that I got to put together, gun cartridges and everything. So what I do, I'm going to take them out of the black bag and I'm going to go ahead and um, airbrush them with white primer and go back over and airbrush them with this ochre on the gun car on the gun carriages. Um, so I got a lot of sub side work to do on it before this thing goes together. It goes together slowly, not fast, slowly. I think the hardest part is getting this hull prepared and ready for painting. Incidentally, fellas, nothing too when you gotta read on the plans. You got the main guides for your sale your, for your lower four cells and, and business sales, main sales yards. You got your veins that come in, so you gotta run your you gotta run uh you gotta run lines from inside out with a with a block on that where you can rig to your yard as they pull as they pull your veins and they put pulling the yards in from inside from the gun deck, from the uh, spar deck. And you got fight rails down there too, it's gotta go in. The inside of the hole's gotta be painted red. It's got also gotta be painted uh, a mixture uh M one M two, which is uh, uh grays, whites and greens like that, all that stuff. That, that's going to be tended after I get this water line all done on the port side. And I'll start getting the inside of this hole. I'm going to get this whole, whole entire hull all painted and all done and ready good for, uh, for further assemblies. Then I'm going to jump on, work on the trail boards, the transom, and get the rudder. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start working on the pennants, the jolly boats, long boats, and start working on all those guns. And I'm going to start putting in little containers right there and have them all painted up. And all, when it comes to insulation, let's go ahead and install them in there. Not plus because they already been previously done. So I've got a lot of sub facilities going on this thing. So anybody that's got this, take your time. Now, here's another good feature I like about this. you got these holes here on top of your on top of your, um, your stands. It fits for your, your ship here. Now, after, you, after you, this thing is sent into the hole here, you can pre-drill holes through, through your board through these plates here, through your bottom your stands. So it actually the countersink the way you can run a, uh, run a screw down through there. So not too tight, you want to spit this plastic. So what I'm going to do probably this Wednesday when I get my check, I'll go down to Hobby Lobby. I'm going to get me a nice beautiful piece of finish, uh, finished wood. I'm going to mount these on there and put my victory on there. That's about as far as I got in this bad girl. There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff to do on this thing. I mean, I, I mean, I mean to tell you guys, there's a, a lot of stuff. So taking time when you build this thing, because this thing here it takes, it, it just requires lots of time. So you got to learn how to take your time on these things. The small ship building is not a hurry task. And. Uh, this ship here is not a hurry task. If I work on this thing every day, I can have this thing done with anywhere for four to five months. So I'm going to be posting a lot of videos on this, just like I did on the Isabella by Billing Boats. I posted 20 videos on the Billing Boats, the Isabella. On this here, I could probably have this thing done in about 30 videos. So it's going to be a long as build log on this thing and YouTube presentation. There's a lot of victories out there. I think it shows great respect for Lord Nelson. His spirit could probably venture in everybody's home and say his ship on a, somebody's mantle or you guys like me is building the ship for him. But he had to have, have a lot of uh, respect for it. And I think the victory is a very beautiful looking ship. This thing here is uh, 
it's a, it's a very, very wonderful, it's a very beautiful ship, well, very well built. The engineering they, back in those days of making something like this is, is incredible. The, everything is so monstrous in this thing. Okay, we'll take the camera back to yours truly and finish up the video. Okay, that about does it, fellas. That'd be video number two. So it'll be about 30 videos when I have this thing all finished. I got a good spot right over here behind me over here. Now, I don't even get near it. I'm going to take the Isabella. I'm going to stick it in the corner over here. It'll be isolated by itself over here by the corner. Now I'm going to put my victory over right behind me over here. Now I'm gonna get me the display case. So I'm gonna put this thing in the case. I'm gonna go down to Hobby. I'm gonna go down to uh, Home Depot and have written me some glass so I can be able to uh, make a display case. This thing here, so I'm gonna get on. The other one got busted. I mean, I didn't. I broke it myself by accident. It was during the move, getting out of here. And I always have a habit of buying two or three kits of the same thing in case something like that happens. All right, at least I got another one. In stock or in my stash, that I can be able to uh, build someday when the moment arises. This is, this is it right here. I got this at a garage sale. I think I did. I'm quite sure I did. That's two models that I found in in, in the garage sales. I found the Blue Jacket. On uh, um, the Blue Jacket Liberty ship was one of them. I mean, oh boy, I tell you, that was a a pristine job. I think I paid a hundred dollars for that. I mean, the guy wanted a hundred bucks. He bought that. And I guess uh, when he opened up the box, he was he was hoping there was a whole ship in there, but it wasn't. It's, it was all kit form, just like this is, you know. Evidently, the guy he said he builds models, but he had no idea that this is, it was this complex because he never worked with stuff like this before. So I guess he got some of his money back. I don't. I think the things run about three hundred something dollars now. Those delivery ships by Blue Jacket, maybe almost four hundred now. I don't know, but they're getting up there, and uh, so I got a brand new one. So I got I got about three of those memory ships in my stash in storage, and I got this in Kettering, Ohio. It's about about thirty miles from my house. I always had to go in garage sales once in a while. I could spot a kid a mile away. I was going down the road. I was on my way to Kroger's grocery store to get some groceries. And I come back to the garage sale over, uh, I think it was 1021 uh, Broad Street in Kettering. So I said, like, hey, what the hell am I pulling there? And let me check this out. So I seen, a, it looked like a picture. I said, well, I can always put that, I can always take a picture. I like, I always put a picture in my living room like that. I like that, 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 that victory picture looks pretty good. I can't look at the hey, wait a second, that's a kid. And I got out of the car. I thought it was a picture for at first, just just driving. And I seen this up against a high chair or something, and uh, got it. Me having, I think, for seventy five bucks. No, fifty dollars. I think it was. It was fifty. Actually, it was his wife. I found out the story about this. The guy and his wife got divorced, and she's selling his things. And uh, so, oh boy. I said, I hope you don't get mad at me buying this victory. But, but anyway, I got it anyway. So I got I saved myself some money. These things are expensive. So I bought this. I took it out of mothballs last week. So that's been, I've been on this thing for about three, about five, five, almost five days now. We've been up for five days. You got, you got a lot of drying time and stuff, you know. One night I did the port side. The next thing the starboard side. Now after this video, I'm going to go ahead and start doing the port side of the of the water line, I'm gonna start doing the antiquing of the bottom of the hull, and I'll show you guys how it's done. And uh, you guys do the same if you like to. A lot of guys, oh, you get yourself some copper tape, get yourself some copper, uh, get you get yourself some of those uh, copper hull plates. Oh yeah, they got them down there. Model ship plates got them. Also, uh, Blue Jacket has them. But God darn, they're a fortune. I mean, if I bought me a packet of those small those small plates, copper plates and blue jacket, you're looking at uh, 
Oh, good gravy. For a model this size, almost $300. That's a lot of dough. And they got that, that copper tape out there, too. I thought about that also. I can always burnish in a little place. Maybe one of these things you might do it on the old iron sides. I got about three or four of those Revell 196 scale. <coughs> I mean, 192 scale uh, USS Constitution. They got the original 1965 kit and the rest of the probably 70s. That could be a victory. You got maybe pop on that out and work on that, too, as well. Anyway, that's about as far as I got on this side. Uh, I was here kit right here, guys. So I was uploading. I'm gonna make preparations, get ready for the tutorial vid uh, video for the uh, air taking of the waterline of Fort Side. So anybody's got this kit, take your time on it. The hard part is getting this hull all painted up, get your galleries all done, and once those, once all your sub assemblies like your cannons and your and your ship's boats and stuff like that. In general, you know, it, it's all just assembling and painting, you know. And it, it, it goes together pretty quick after that. So, follow the instructions. The instructions right there. You can't go wrong. Just, just, it's just the way it's formatted. It works for me. It works very well. It's just the way it's designed. So, be patient and follow the directions. Okay. I'd like to thank... All my wonderful new subscribers and all you rest of you fellows, I love you guys very much. And thank you very, very dearly for your wonderful candor and wonderful, wonderful comments on my videos. I'm very honored each one and every one of you. And uh, please bear with me and have patience because Mikey Dave made a transition. I'm working on ships now. And uh, same on me, just working on ships. And Bruce and I'll be cracking on card models next and balsam with airplanes and you name it, I'll be on it. So, so bear with me. It'll be 30 videos of the HMS Victory. And uh, so stay, stick with me on this. And uh, I'll keep you guys entertained. I'll keep my hands busy. Keep them going. Okay. Stay tuned next for the tutorial of the taking of the waterline on the HMS Victory. Stay posted for that. I have that coming for you. Make mama happy. Take care of the little ones. Take care of yourselves. Stay focused when you drive. Spend wisely. Look around. When you got to take care of your business and work and everything, be aware of your surroundings. Build a model. Get kicked crazy like Stu says. And uh, God bless you all. And uh, thank you very much. And God love you guys. This is Frankie Day from Frankie Day Model signing off. And uh, y'all take care of yourselves, and we'll catch you on the next video. So stay posted for that. And uh, that'd be it. Bye, fellas. Take care, guys.